Welcome to Framework Fortune Crypto. I'm your host, Ben, and we're going to be diving into one of my favorite play to earn blockchain games right now on the Ethereum blockchain on the Layer 2 Immutable X, Gods Unchained. Now, if you've been following me, you already know what's going on somewhat, but this is a value rating system that I come up with using my years of experience in the stock market and other assets like precious metals things like that you can catch all that on the framework fortune home channel since i've been on youtube the past three years but none of this is financial advice and this will not actually work as financial advice you actually have to put the work in yourself the research with this rating system however this rating system will help you in doing that research and deciding yourself what could be an excellent value five gods token rating nft card or a one gods token rated trash nft card so this looks simple enough on the face value obviously this is based off of a one to five star scale like any other review system so five gods tokens being the highest one gods token being the lowest now i'm going to go into what is behind each of these gods tokens because this is a value system but each gods token represents one value criteria out of five so if the nft meets all five of these criteria in your mind then you could give it a five gods token rating meaning that it is an excellent value referring to the previous chart we looked at and this value rating system for gods unchained which can be used for other nft play to earn games or any other assets really but a link to the download to this will be in the description so you can get a copy yourself or you can simply pause the video and take a quick screenshot of each graphic and then you got it there as well. Of course, everything that I might mention as far as other networks, things like that will all be in the description too. So the first criteria out of the five we're going to look at and talk about right now is, is it a strong card? If it's a strong card, it's a very high percent win rate card especially in decks in the mythic rankings or diamond rankings the higher rankings where the competition is really heavy because the prize pools are really heavy now we're also going to cover number two at the same time because both of them in your research which we'll get into in just a second will be relevant to each other is it a popular card? And both of these are a demand aspects. Is there going to be lots of demand? Is it a strong card and is it a popular card? We don't have to guess on this because it's all on blockchain. If you're not using GUDEX.com, I highly recommend it whether you are a gamer, trader, or whatever because this is going to give you a ton of information. When you come to GUDEX.com, to get to the cards, we're just going to go to Meta. I know it says cards right there, but that's a collection of the cards. This is the actual stats, the Meta. So we're going to go all the way down to card rankings. And now we can see a whole lot of information. But I want to see specifically because three days, unless you're trying to trade one of these NFTs really quick, this isn't going to give you that much information. We want to look at the highest time period possible because that's going to give us the most information. So we're going to put it at 30 days. Now we can go just off of Mythic for this example, but if we wanted to increase the results and see the overall from Mythic on down, we can do that and that's probably the best idea because then you're going to get all of the player base to see what's the most popular card. However, we want to find first a really strong card. So we've got it to all gods, the sets all, rarities all, and then we have that minimum 100 matches. So we can go even further and go up to 5,000 matches, but that's really going to shorten the results as gods has not been around that long. So we'll just keep it at 100 games. That's a pretty good test parameter to go off of right away we see the citadel of the gods right here number one card and this card is a one of one it is a mythic they only meant one nft that is a mythic per set 
so the supply on this is very low which we'll get into in a second but you can see because it's such a good card it is going for 42 ethereum but i'm not and you're probably not either looking for a eighty thousand dollar one of god's card to trade so let's just go to the third one down hades underworld lord he is a good card he's going for 0 0.02 ethereum right now if you come over to token trove which is a great resource you can see the cash price of that 0 0.2 ether is around 25 bucks so you don't have to go and do the conversion of this but if you're looking at this card and you've not even played gods yet you don't even know what's going on you're looking to get into it that's how we're going to be looking at this card because anytime you're looking at some type of asset or nft some type of something whatever you're looking for the value in you want to look at it like you've never seen it before so just looking at this card with no knowledge of gods, what are we going to notice first about it besides the really cool art of Hades? Well, we can see there's a big old 9 here and a big old 5. We can see there's a lot of text on here and we can see that there's these weird colored diamonds as well as these golden leaf things. I don't know what they're called exactly, but surrounding Hades making this graphically pleasing to the eye just off a little common sense nine is a really high number but we do have an eight up here which is a high number as well so we can assume just by looking at this card and one other guy's nft card that this is high for whatever these mean if you don't know yet so we can assume that means there's some strength in this card but then let's read what it does whenever another friendly creature dies summon a random creature with the same mana cost from your void so whenever your ally creatures die you bring in a creature that was already dead back to the board that is very valuable in any type of game whether it be an nft trading card game or an nft shooter whatever the case may be so we know that's got some type of strength to it and then also hades underworld lord if you've ever watched the original Hercules as a kid or any of the Hercules renditions that's been out there, you know about Greek mythology. Hades is one of the main gods. He is the god of death. So that also brings another element to the value of this card. It does have that nostalgia and historical reference to Hades himself. So all of that without even knowing the game, we can tell you know 25 bucks that might not be too bad for this but we got to look a little bit further if we learn the game we'll know that this is eight mana this is going to cost us quite a bit to play this right now the meta is very fast and knowing that we know it's going to be hard to get this out however the green right here around this eight at the top is the god that this card relates to this green means death death has a lot of healing, a lot of bringing creatures back from the void, a lot of shenanigans like this. So knowing that, we know that it is possible for death decks, especially with all the zombies, to get to 8 mana. There's also some death cards, especially Anubians, that unlock mana. This is the health on the card is actually really high in Gods Unchained. 5 attack, kind of medium. It's a decent attack, but for 8 mana, it's kind of low. You'd rather see this around a 6 or a 7 probably. That's a weakness to me, being a player, knowing that. But overall, is it a good card? Because of Gudex, we know that it has that high percentage. And because it's Hades, has that nostalgia like I mentioned, it fits a popular card as well. So the first two tokens, making that a two-star card, would give us that demand. Now, next, is it locked or open? What does that mean? And we're going to start going into the example now, since we explained the first token. And this is my excellent value example and this is my personal opinion i'm very biased because i love this card neferu champion of death this little emblem here right at the top corner decides what set it is and then it says here set trial now god's unchained sets can be unlocked or locked if they're locked all that simply means is they cannot be changed that set is closed there's no more balancing the devs cannot touch those cards they are set in stone unlocked means that they can still be balanced 
they can still be changed, which can significantly increase or decrease the value or do nothing at all. A lot of times we see nice opportunities in the God's NFT market with the unlocked sets to possibly make some quick profits off of upcoming changes that might be happening where you can grab something cheap and it might spike in price. But there are only two sets right now that are unlocked. There is one set, the core set, which is always unlocked. It can be changed at any time. Any of those cards can be changed and not just the text. They can be changed from the god that they're used with. They can be changed to a neutral where they can be used with any god. The health can be changed. The attack can be a changed. Even the name of the card can be changed. We've seen cards get full-on whole revamps, and it's a whole totally different card, which sometimes brings up that value. Sometimes it doesn't. The other unlock set is Mortal Judgment. Now, Mortal Judgment is unlocked but it's the newest set so they're still balancing it and there's a lot of good cards in that set and they could get nerfed they could get brought down or they could get buffed if they're not seeing a lot of play so with unlocked sets the price changes can be very very significantly different day to day or week to week depending on what is going on with the meta and the devs with their balancing. For the most part, I would kind of stay away from looking at the core set and the Mortal Judgment set at the moment as it is so new using this rating system because like I said, it can change so quick. You might rate something a five gods token card and then all of a sudden the next day you go to buy it and you see something different and now it's a one gods token card so this is going to be the most effective with all the locked sets that's why that is a very important gods token and neferu is from the trial of the god set which is locked she can never be changed so she gets one token here for the trial for being in a locked set that's the third token she gets a token because she's a good card and she gets a token because she is a popular card you can see right here down in the screenshot that i pulled from gudex in death out of 33,000 matches during this time period she was almost 12 percent in every deck and then you can see the deck win rates are all averaging over 50 percent so definitely a good card definitely a popular card so it gets both those tokens so now we're at three tokens fourth token low market supply so on token trove we'll be able to see the supply this graphic was pulled from token trove you can see i own one and there's only 2809 that have been minted that will only be minted there's not going to be any other neferus that come out give or take maybe a few that people could have possibly took an off chain but generally this number is pretty close to accurate 2800 if there's 80,000 players in the game right now in the gods discord I don't know exactly what it is but somewhere around there or maybe higher 2800 of them only existing makes it a very low supply so that low supply it gets that fourth token for that and then the fifth gods token the high volume lots of transactions so we're going to go back to token trove now and we're going to pull up neferu so we've got her pulled up and there are higher quality nfts which are higher price lower supply and all of that but this rating system is basically just designed for generalized meteorite quality you couldn't you can't absolutely use it for these higher quality but it's very speculative right now how much these higher quality cards are going to earn in the p2e because they aren't earning anything yet very soon in the daily play to earn but not yet i'll probably do an update after we get a couple of months of daily play to earn but anyway you look right here at the meteorite version there's 77 for sale 2800 like we said we click on that for and look at the chart up here now on this chart this is a basic line chart it's in the stock market anything corn gold silver amazon neferu can be put on a line chart and all this line chart is showing the price changes of the nft current market price and then it shows down here these orange bars at the bottom 
volume bars, which just means amount of transactions in a time period. So we look across here, we see that usually Neferu sells one at least a day. Some days she might not sell very much, but consistently over a month time span, there's been quite a bit of Neferu's bought and sold. And if we look at all time, which it's really small to see, but this volume is pretty consistent. So it has the high volume, lots of transactions with the low market supply. So it gets the fifth token. So once we value these with all five tokens and put it all together, then we want to look at the price chart and also see if we're getting it at a good price, right? Just because something is an excellent value of five tokens, you got to value it to previous and current market prices. So previously, all time, last year, Neferu reached a high of over $300. Currently, since the crypto market has pulled back and had its crash since the beginning of this year, everything has come down, of course, but Neferu's been sitting around $75, $80 and holding that area. If things start to rebound, maybe it's a possibility with it having high demand because it's a strong card, a popular card in a lock set with a low supply and that high volume it could get back up into some higher prices pretty easily because it meets all five token criteria this area of price looking back previous on the chart we can see has been a relatively low area that neferu for a long period of time will stay at or tries to stay at historically this could be a good time to pick up a Neferu according to this whole rating system. Now, could the market continue to drop the overall crypto market, of course, and that could drop prices of NFTs. We are in on pretty much a global recession, so money is tight for a lot of people, mass population of people. So I do think people will come to the internet looking for ways to make money and that will bring some into gods unchained and other pte games as things are tightening but will they spend a lot of money on it probably not so you do got to keep that in mind spending 75 dollars for nefru may be a good price to you now because you think it might go up to 300 but if things get rougher you may have to hold her and she goes lower in usd price However, you are getting to play with this NFT, and if the NFT is making your deck better, you're going to make more NFTs, which you can sell or trade on the Token Trove IMX marketplace, and you're going to get more God's tokens when you're winning. You're going to be higher in the rankings. So there is some give and take when it comes to that. You have, If you're not playing the game, though, that is going to change your perspective because you're not actively earning on that card. So Where? next I'm going to pick a random card and go through the same process that I did for Neferu. And we're going to put it down here as another live example. So I am going to take out the unlocked sets, the core sets, and the Mortal Judgment set. So we can just do this with lock sets. So all your lock sets, Etherbots, Promo, Genesis, which is the original, Trial of the Gods, which is the second major release, Divine Order, which just closed about a month ago or two months ago, I believe, and then another promo set. So we're going to look through these. Let's go with Friendly Mimic. Now that we know what card we're going with, let's go ahead and start filling out some of those tokens because we have some of the information already and then we might have to adjust it after we get through all the research but we'll see but we're going to search for the friendly mimic and there it is okay so the friendly mimic out of all matches it's in two percent of decks so that's not good not a lot of people are using it we'll have to read it and see why if you look at the copies here you can see most people if they are running are only really running one copy of it it's also not a card people are even using two ofs you know these 
other than legendaries, you can use two of any card. And people who are using this, the 0.2%, are only using one copy. So that is very, very low demand that we have on this. So we go back to our valuation system. We have the Mimic in here. And let's take a look at the actual card itself. So it's four mana. That's uh, medium mana cost. You're not going to be able to play it probably in the first two or three turns. And if you are, it has a roar effect, which is going to be automatic when you play it to add a copy of a friendly creature to your hand. So this sounds really good, but you have to have a friendly creature on the field to be able to trigger this. If you don't, then this card becomes blank. Now, it is a neutral. You can see by the gray color there, this is not God specific. It can be used with any God, which in my opinion is a plus, not one of my requirements of the tokens, but when considering if it's a good card or not, that's something to consider whether one god can play it or all the gods can play it. It is a rare card. We can tell by the blue diamonds and then it says it right there, rarity. And then we look at the health and attack, two and two. So for that four mana creature that you may or may not get this effect off with, it is going to be easily killable and also is not going to do very much damage. It also is not a tribe of any sort, so it's not going to get any tribe archetype buffs. Now, it is a Genesis set. This is one of the Genesis cards, and there is only 10,000. Not a huge supply compared to other cards. There's some cards, like the common cards and Divine Order. There's a whole lot of them, like 100,000. So we'll say one token so far for it possibly being low supply and in a lock set. Is it a popular card? No, we know it's not, so we would not put that token over there. We go back up, is it locked? It is locked, so we can give it a token for being in a locked set for Genesis. So we're gonna put it right there at the Genesis token, this one at the supply. So we look back up, Low market supply, we've already done that one. Now high volume, lots of transactions. We're going to go back to Token Trove to check that out. We go to the monthly chart that we're on here. We can see they've been selling most days, at least one, two, three, there's seven that day, 22 on June 28th. Uh, so there has been some volume. All time though we look, they get consistent sales, but just not a whole lot. And it's not like the price is that high where Neferu is around $80, Friendly Mimic is around $4 in Ethereum. At one point, it was all the way up to $20 just about, but has sold off all the way back down. Just hit a low of $265 not too long ago, which was about the same price it was for most of the previous year. So there is volume on it. There is a decent amount of transactions going through. So we can go ahead and give it the third token for the transaction volume. Whether it's a good card or not, again, I don't think I would give it a full token. Maybe because it does have a pretty unique effect, maybe we go half a token on that. Altogether, we're going to rate this for now as a three and a half gods token valuation. Because the supply is 10,000, almost 11,000, and there's not a ton of these demand for it being a strong card or a popular card, that strong card's real debatable, and it's definitely not popular, I'm actually going to take down half a token, so we would remove this one, and then I'm going to also take down a half token for the volume not being that high. There are not a ton of transaction on this cheap of a card and it being a lock set. So all in all, I would give this about a two and a half valuation. Looking back at the beginning of this whole graphic, two and a half would be in the middle of meh and possibly decent value. 
there are new sets that will come out maybe that card becomes better and that pushes it up in these ratings but as of now off of the data that we have from Gudex from Token Trove a two and a half God Token rating on this system is pretty fair I think for that card but let me know in the comments if you think it should be higher or lower same with Neferu is my bias on Neferu making me give her a higher rating than I should be so that's pretty much it that's all there is to it and again all the links to everything mentioned will be in the description including the free download to this chart that you can use to maybe map out and strategize your gods unchained nft trading or any other nft games that it may work for appreciate everybody joining me as always stay safe out there until next time